Hey, everyone, and welcome to Building SaaS on AWS, the flagship show for SaaS on Twitch. My name is Gunnar Grosch. I'm a developer advocate at AWS. And if you're building or planning to build a SaaS product, this is the show for you. And what we do here on this show is dive deep into SaaS-specific topics so you can learn more about building SaaS on AWS. And this week, I'm happy to be joined by Kevin Mueller from Cloud Zero and our old friend Ujval Bukka from the AWS SaaS factory. Welcome to the show, both of you. Hey, thank, thank you. you much. Thank you. So we do the quick round of introductions as usual. Ujval, let's start with you. Sure. Um, I'm Ujwal Buka. I'm a partner solution architect with the AWS SaaS Factory team. My team, SaaS Factory team, primarily provides uh, business and technical guidance for uh, various ISVs and enterprises uh, who are building their SaaS solutions on AWS. So through this uh, guidance, we try to accelerate their SaaS journey. Thank you. All right. Welcome to the show. And Kevin, welcome. Hey, thank you. Uh, my name is Kevin Mueller. I'm a principal technologist at Cloud Zero. Here at Cloud Zero, you know, we try to make uh, efficient innovation a reality for every cloud-driven organization. So we call ourselves a cloud cost intelligence platform. We can organize and allocate spend any way you want uh, without tagging. We go beyond tagging that we can pull in KPI metrics and share that with your cost data and allocate unit cost, uh, cost per transaction, any way you want. We look at cost as services. To build a modern SaaS platform, you're not just using an AWS cloud. You might have an application monitoring platform like New Relic or uh, Dynatrace. You might use uh, some data store like uh, Snowflake. We can bring in any cost into our platform, including revenue, and allocate it and share it any way you want in your business context. Perfect. Thank you very much for joining us today, Kevin. And to the viewers, if this is the first time watching, or even if you're a seasoned viewer of the show, you know that this is an interactive show. So if you have any questions, any comments, just pop them in the chat and we'll try uh, to answer them. Or, well, I'll, I'll ask the question to, to our guest, the experts in the field, Kevin and Ujval. And we also have Anthony with us in the chat to help you answer any questions or guide you to spe specific SaaS content if needed. So, Kevin, before we jump into perhaps the, the meat of the session, I want to get your take on what's different with SaaS applications. So, you know, with the movement to the cloud and the movement to SaaS applications, we're now building kind of multi-tenant applications. So we have multiple clients and customers using shared resources. And the reason we want to do this is so that we're building an efficient application that scales up and down based on the usage of our tenants, our customers. And that's how you can make an efficient platform so that you can make a profitable platform. So here at Cloud Zero, we kind of like to say that we, uh, every engineering decision is a buying decision and we want to help engineering profit. So what's different is once you get these customers using a shared resources, how do you price and package um, that application? And what is the cost of your uh, services that your customers are using? It's very important for SaaS companies to understand that in this shared infrastructure environment. And, and then um, you, you brought us to, to the cost of, of SaaS applications. And how do we actually, or why do we actually need to calculate cost per tenant in SaaS? Well, so it all comes down to business context. You know, as engineers, you might not want to care about that, but it's very important about the cost because you can use cost as a metric just right next to your performance and your resiliency metrics to understand how your customers are using your platform and how does it change? So what's going to happen is as you're onboarding new customers, you would expect your cloud bill to go up, right? That's going to be a successful business. But if you're not calculating the unit cost or that cost per customer, and you mm -hmm. want to see that going down over time, um, you want to do that because then you're profitable. Now you know you have an efficient system because you're onboarding more customers, you're using more compute, you're more storage, but the cost per is being driven down. That makes finance happy. You know, and 
we're, as engineers, we're, we work in businesses and they have to be profitable and you have to help them. In finance, in the uh, C-suites, they need to know what's going on. And so you have to help them have this conversation between engineering and finance to make sure that your company is stable and profitable. And keeping that C-suite and the finance department happy, that's a core part of everything we do, no matter the role in a company. You know, at the end of the day, our salaries are dependent on the company's success and it's our yeah. job to help them. For sure. So uh, then why is cost allocation important and how can that be challenging? So, right. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, you jump. Yeah, so I just wanted to add that. So the, the, you know, the simple answer is, you know, by calculating cost per tenant, uh, you will know how much you need to charge uh, for your customers. You know, that's a simple answer. But, you know, if we let's take a, take a step back and think about it. So in order to calculate cost per tenant, uh, you need to measure the tenant resource consumption. Mm -hmm. So the data or the insights related to the, um, you know, tenant resource consumption and the cost per tenant is a valuable information for your SaaS business teams and for technical teams. SaaS business teams can use this data uh, to make some strategic decisions around how to build, sell, and market your SaaS application. So basically, they can think about how they need to package different uh, uh, features under different tiers and offer that as a SaaS offering. Whereas the technical teams, what they can do is like use this data to make some strategic decisions around how to uh, design, scale, or operate your SaaS solutions. Having said that, uh, calculating cost per tenant is definitely challenging um, because out there, every SaaS solution uh, it has a different architecture and uh, it throws out you know, different challenges. And there is no one a model or approach with, that would fit all the SaaS applications. So when you look at this as application architectures, you know what you will usually see is there is some part of your architecture uh, which is shared across the tenants and some part of the architecture which is dedicated for uh, particular tenants. And then... And you know, to add more complexity to it, you might need to deep dive into you know application metrics and gather um, you know resource consumption regarding from an application perspective. So what I'm trying to say is that there are a lot of moving parts, and there is no one simple answer or a simple approach to uh, you know to solve this problem. So what you have to come up with an approach which suits you, and then uh, try to build that thing. So. That's that's the reason, you know. That's that's what I want to conclude. That you know, um, calculating cost per tenant is definitely challenging, and it's not a straightforward um, problem to solve. Yeah. And, and for people who's watched the show or episodes before, know that when we bring you on Ujwal, you you probably built something, and then maybe you can explain what you've built to showcase how to calculate cost per tenant. And sure. Of course, with Cloud Zero. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll, this goes back to earlier this year. Um, so Kevin Mueller from um, Cloud Zero and uh, Bill Tar, one of my colleagues from um, AWS as Factory team, and myself, we, we three got together and we wanted to come up with an approach or a solution where we want to showcase that, you know, we want to pick a, a simple uh, a, a SaaS application and want to show how we can easily integrate with our partner product, uh, Cloud Zero, without any much heavy lifting, how we can get uh, uh, calculate cost per tenant. So... With that idea, we went ahead and uh, we came up with a solution and an approach and which we are going to publish as a blog. The blog would come out in a few weeks from now. Um, but what we will do today is like, you know, as a part of the session, we'll walk you through that solution in detail about what we came up with. So there are two things here. Uh, the one is the SaaS application um, setup, which usually runs in your AWS account, and then um, a Cloud Zero uh, account setup, which Kevin will talk in a bit here. But let me introduce uh, the you know the SaaS application setup thing. So for this solution or the approach which we are which I'm going to explain, you can take any SaaS application. All we need to make sure that that SaaS application is um, um, following best practices around when it is capturing metrics. So what I mean by that is like when you're capturing the metrics, you need to make sure that you are adding the tenant context to it, like tenant ID, so that once you log that uh, metrics. Later on, you'll be able to go back and aggregate those uh, uh, data by uh, tenant ID. Mm -hmm. And another best practice is it needs to follow is to tag your resources. You will see in a bit how the tagging would help for the uh, cost per tenant. Um, so, so for uh, for this solution, uh, we haven't uh, built a new uh, SaaS application as such, uh, but we leverage some of the resources which were built by my team, uh, AWS Aspect team. Uh, that is one of the resource is a serverless SaaS reference solution. This 
this is an uh, um, this is a, a reference solution which you can deploy in your aws account and it will give you a, a saas application uh, let me share my screen just to run through the high level architecture of that uh, um, saas application so this is a serverless uh, high level architecture uh, diagram of a serverless saas uh, reference solution um, i won't go much details into this uh, reference solution but uh, we have we did an episode with gunar on uh, doing a deep dive on the serverless saas reference solution we'll provide you those links and also the link of the github repo um, where you can you know deep dive into it but yeah coming back to the uh, the the solution which we are talking about we dip, when you deploy the serverless saas rep um, reference solution in your aws account it will give you a saas application so the middle ui what you see is the ui of that saas application this saas application is a simple e-commerce application uh, which provides services like order and product services um, where you can create some orders and products and there are other components here um, in this uh, reference solution will bring in other components um, those other components are mostly the saas control plane where you can onboard a tenant using a silo model where you create a separate set of resources just for those tenants and uh, um, or you can onboard it in using a pool model where you can uh, you know share the uh, set of uh, resources um for this saas application the architecture is uh, since it is a serverless saas application the architecture is uh, simple straightforward it has an api gateway it has a bunch of lambda functions backed up by dynamo db table that's a brief overview of the uh, saas application uh, we were using we are using in this solution now over to kevin um, to explain about the cloud zero setup And just to to clarify, Udval, so we're using this reference architecture, the one that you previously showed in an episode on the show, um, but but the same setup or or way of working with uh, cost per tenant, it would work for basically any type of SaaS application. Right, exactly. You know, as I said, like you know, um, we use this SaaS application, but it doesn't need to be this one. Uh, it can mm. be any SaaS application. I know the concepts which you are going through or the the approach we are talking about would apply for any SaaS application. Got it, Kevin. Yeah. So you know, connecting to Cloud Zero is fairly easy. So let me share my screen real quick. Um, you know, all you're going to do is is go to app.cloudzero.com. and then you'll create an account and then from there we'll do create a new account connection and it's simply um connecting to the account automated and then we'll create a cloud formation script that will create a cross account role that has read only permissions and once that's set uh cloud zero platform will go in and consume your cur and some other resource type data but it's very quick and easy to get connected it takes less than 5 minutes Okay. Um, yeah, um, and then we want to look at perhaps what the different kind of metrics that we're capturing then to be able to to actually calculate cost per tenant. Sure. Yeah. So, so what we did is like you know, as I said, like we took a simple SaaS application. The architecture I briefly explained. Um, it, it provisions a, a silo resources and the pool resources. So. what we did is like you now we bucketed into two different things one is a uh, siloed resources and the pool resources for the siloed resources uh, the the saas application which we are using already tags the resources with the tenant id and again you will see in a bit how uh, these tags would be useful for calculating cost per tenant whereas for the pool resources uh, the mm, calculating cost per tenant is definitely challenging uh, when compared to the silo we cannot use the tag approach because again in the pool resources there are a bunch of tenants using those resources so in the pool what you have to do is like you no know, pick up some areas where we need to capture or measure the tenant resource consumption or capture the metrics around those areas or and then uh, use that information to calculate a cost per tenant so since we, what we are the application which we are using is a serverless saas application as i said uh, it has just an api gateway lambda functions and dynamo db table so the two areas which we picked up is uh, calculating number of lambda invocations for each tenant and also calculating number of dynamo db capacity units consumed by each tenant when they are interacting with uh, the uh, interacting with the dynamo db database so yeah so there are two buckets one is a, a silo resources which through the tags we will we'll try to capture the metrics around that and then calculate cost per tenant for the pool one two areas cal number of lambda invocations and calculating capacity units for the dynamo db database these are the two metrics we'll try to capture 
and just for for the the beginners in the SaaS space to get them up to speed as well uh, siloed resource means that it's a resource that's specific for that tenant and a pool resource is something that's shared across multiple tenants right cool um, and in this in this architecture can you give a couple of examples of of what resources are siloed and which ones are pooled Right, so so the the SaaS it goes back again. Uh, no, um, it goes back. Usually, it goes back to the your SaaS application in your architecture uh, mm. that defines what type of silo resources and uh, pool resources. But in our case, our SaaS application, um, as I said, it, you know when it it provides a way where you're onboarding a tenant. When you're onboarding a tenant, you can select a tenant tier. Let's say if you ch choose a platinum tier, which is the highest tier, then what it does is like it onboards the uh, tenant in such a way that it creates a separate API gateway, separate a set of lambda functions and separate DynamoDB tables, and if you choose a tier which is using uh, you know a pool model, then what it does is uh, you know, it onboards the tenant in such a way that this single API gateway, bunch of lambda functions and bunch of DynamoDB tables which are shared across all the tenants. So, I mean, in typically you know uh, in an um, SaaS architecture, there will be some part which is shared and some part will be siloed. And in in our case, we we kind of like you know have the whole architecture. Either shared or we are creating a separate uh, um, uh, hmm. for the tenant. So, yeah. Right. All right. If you just joined us, this is Building SaaS on AWS with me, Gunnar. I'm joined by Kevin from Cloud Zero today and Ujval from the AWS SaaS factory. And we're looking at basically how to calculate cost per tenant using Cloud Zero. So, Ujval, I want to dive a bit deeper into the architecture. Uh, I think that's something that our viewers enjoy as well so maybe we can bring up your screen again and have a look sure. at that sure yeah um so just wanted to you know um, use this slide to explain the the our um, solutions architecture so the left hand side um is the SaaS is an aws account where you deploy your SaaS application and the right hand side is the cloud zero setup and you know there are various components which kevin will cover in a bit but on the left hand side let's assume that you have deployed the, your SaaS application and you know uh, the the, I'm not uh, showing you all the different moving parts of that SaaS application, but only showing you the parts which are relevant for our solution here. So what you have is like, as I said, uh, uh, the SaaS application which we picked up is a serverless SaaS application. The compute is running in Lambda and the database is the DynamoDB database. So again, there are two, two things here. One is the siloed uh, resources and also the pooled resources. For the siloed resources, as I just mentioned before, we have a separate set of uh, Lambda functions, uh, which are uh, created, which, and also a separate set of DynamoDB tables, which are created, and they are tagged with the tenant ID. I will show you that in a bit, uh, how that looks in the AWS console. And then um, and then there is also another uh, thing here is called AWS cost and usage report. Uh, this report you can download from the uh, billing uh, um, service. So what it does is like, you know, it tries to um, provide you the usage uh, by the tags which you created. Uh, I will also show you an example of uh, how that uh, report looks like. And then you will see how this data is used by Cloud Zero and provides you enriched uh, um, information of that in a bit. And uh, that's for the siloed uh, resources. Uh, for the pooled ones, uh, the equation is a little bit different. So where, again, for this pool also, you have this bunch of Lambda functions and a bunch of DynamoDB tables, which are shared across uh, the tenants. But in here, as I mentioned, uh, um, what we have to think about is that we picked up two areas that is calculating the number of Lambda invocations and the interactions with the DynamoDB table and cal calculating the capacity units. So what this, the the our, our product and order service, that is application services, which are running in Lambda functions, they follow the best practices around when capturing the metrics, like basically when it is logging the metrics around Lambda invocations or a number of capacity units consumed, it will uh, attach the tenant context and logs that to the CloudWatch logs. And then, then what we did is like you now we've written an aggregator uh, function where what it basically does is like you know, it goes into this CloudWatch logs and runs the CloudWatch log insights query to aggregate this data by tenant ID. If you remember, the our our product and order services are capturing the data with tenant ID. So this aggregator Lambda function would go in and aggregates that whole data and then um, sends this data to the telemetry APIs to the uh, Cloud Zero. And let me let me jump quickly onto the AWS console here and just uh, walk you through the, all the different components which I just mentioned and you know show you the code in there so that uh, it may paints a beautiful picture there. So let me go into the AWS console. 
so again what i'll do here is like you know again um, go through you through the uh, siloed resources approach and then the pooled ones for the siloed ones as i said you have the lambda function if you look at a lambda function um, get products or something um if you click on that one um if you look at the configuration under the tags you see that you know this is the unique tenant id we create for each uh, for that particular tenant so you see the tenant id and uh, for uh, if you look at for the pooled functions the any any pooled lambda function if you look at the tags it's just a generic one the pooled one um mm. and whereas if you switch over to the dynamo db tables again there are separate tables for uh, you know siloed tenants the table name would look like something like that and if you look at the tags of that dynamo db table what you will see is like you know under the tags here um it is tagged with tenant id and similarly if you look at the pooled tables of the product or you know order tables it is just the named as a pool um and now now I'll, I'll you know i'll move on to the next thing is you know the 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 cost and usage report which you can pull that from the uh, aws uh, billing uh, ui before you do that you need to do some some, some setup so you, know, you have to come to this uh, particular ui and then click on this cost and usage report and then you know you have to do the setup i've already did the setup when you're doing the setup it will ask you to you know um, um, say that you know like when do you want to generate like an hourly or daily and then uh, it will ask you to configure an s3 bucket where you can push all these reports to the s3 bucket so i've i've already pre configured this and downloaded a, a, you know it created a report for me and downloaded a, a, that report it's a csv report let me share quickly that report how does it look like it has lot of other data but let me point you to the the tags stuff so it creates you know if you can see it here it basically creates a, you know the it adds this tags information and if i filter by that tags it is basically listing me the all the data by the tenant so this is one of the tenant which was running in in my uh, fast application that's a, a silo tenant and this is the pool for the rest of the pool resources has this pool tag so it is trying to aggregate the things by a uh, tenant and if you try to look at this data it has lot of you know um, i'll lot of other data like you know the usage amount and the number of dollar amount and everything um, you will see that you know how we will use this uh, in the cloud zero to enrich the information that's that's a story for the siloed resources uh, whereas for the pooled ones um, as i said like you know we we we, we are looking at uh, two areas uh, one is um, uh, calculating the number of lambda invocations and then the uh, cap capturing the dynamo db capacity units for that let's start with the uh, our product and order services Uh, let me pull the code of our product and order services so this is a code uh, snippet from the uh, saas application which you get from the uh, serverless saas reference solution and i'm opening up and looking at now what you're looking at is a, a product service and one of the method in the product service is get products so the point the, the area which i wanted to highlight is these two things here um so if you see here uh, once the particular function has execution has completed uh, what we are logging here is basically saying that you know hey the request has completed to get all the products so just mm -hmm. remember this keyword as request is completed um and the other thing uh, the this is the, this particular statement is what it is doing is logging to the cloudwatch uh, logs and the next thing what we are doing is using a metrics manager module we are trying to record a, a metric related to the number of uh, items returned from the dynamo db table and we are uh, we are uh, capturing the metrics with a name as products retrieved best just hold on with me uh, i'll explain in in a bit how we are converting this count into the capacity units um but before we go that i wanted to highlight one of the best practice here is that you know if you see that um when you are logging the uh, when you are logging the um, message or uh, capturing the metrics what we are doing is like we are just passing the input event and uh, these logger and the metrics manager is exposed through the lambda layers and let's open up that uh, those two modules and if you look at the <clears throat> this is the logger module if you look at the logger module in this method what we are doing is like from the input event we are getting the tenant id and then attaching that tenant id to the uh, message and we do the same thing for the metrics manager we are getting the tenant id and then uh, attaching it to the metrics so the point i want to stress out here is that you know when you're logging the um, you know metrics information uh, you just pass in the uh, event uh, and the the libraries which are exposed in this case through lambda layers 
is cracking open that event and getting the tenant context and attaching the tenant context to it and then um, storing the information. So now, now, now let's you know this the product or the order service is capturing the metrics in the uh, CloudWatch logs and now let me show you quickly uh, through the aggregator code which tries to aggregate this data. So let me pull up that code. So this is a Lambda, code, sorry, this is a um, Python code, uh, which we are we have published it on an AWS uh, samples. Um, so you can take a look at later too, we'll provide you the links. So let me quickly run through this uh, uh, code here. The, it has two methods. One is which aggregates the Lambda invocations by tenant. And the other method is aggregates Dynamo capac uh, DynamoDB capacity units by tenant. So if I walk through that code, let's pick up this method and let's walk through the code. The initial for loop, what it is doing here is basically going through the, uh, you know, uh, and gathering, you know, it's looping through the all the CloudWatch log groups and basically getting the CloudWatch log groups of different Lambda functions which are present in your um, in your application. Mm -hmm. And the, the this part of the code is basically calculating the start date and end date um, based upon the configured number of hours. And then um, it is it is using this particular query to query the log groups which has collected and aggregate the data. So let's spend a few minutes here the, what this uh, Cloud, uh, CloudWatch Insights query is doing. So all this query is doing is it is looking for this word called request completed. If you remember, uh, you know, in a few minutes back, I showed you when you're looking at your application uh, services code, when the Lambda function has completed its execution, we are logging a message called, called as request completed. So basically I'm looking for that message in the CloudWatch logs and since uh, when we are logging that information, we are attached the tenant context to it. You you will get the tenant ID and you are able to aggregate this metrics. And again, I've used this this way of you know you looking for this message. But again, in your in your SaaS application, you can um, use your own way of you know capturing the metrics or word or anything, and then pull that information up here. And the next once. Once this query is executed against the um, the cloud collected uh, CloudWatch log groups, you get the aggregated information, and then you post that information to an um, CloudWatch telemetry API. And let me also, you know, uh, quickly uh, run through the code of uh, DynamoDB capacity units, aggregating the DynamoDB capacity units. So again, this method is um, it's straightforward. It does the for loop is does the similar thing, gets the CloudWatch log groups, and this part of the code here, the next part of the code is basically trying to get the start time and end time. And then here, this is the query which uh, executes, uh, which is basically aggregating the uh, the capacity units of uh, number of uh, DynamoDB capacity units. So and again, this query does a similar stuff. What it is doing is looking for these keywords like product created, product updated, or product retrieved. So whenever a, a Lambda function, when it is, if it is creating a product is, is getting created by the Lambda function, it um, captures the metrics with the name as product created. And if it is updated, it um, captures the metrics with the name as a, with, the, with the keyword as a product updated. So I'm using those keywords to get the capacity units and then aggregate that by tenant ID. So one thing, like you know, as I mentioned here, you know, if you observed uh, that, you know, what we are doing is like you know, we are getting the count, and from that count, we are um, getting the um, DynamoDB capacity units. Um, what you can do is like you know, um, in your SaaS application, when you are making a call to a DynamoDB table. You can ask the DynamoDB table to, you know, get return you the number of capacity units consumed by that for that operation, and log that information as a metrics and aggregate that capacity units. You can do that, but the for our solution, the story we wanted to tell is that you know, you can pick a SaaS application without changing much in it. Um, this few approximation, you should be able to, you know, gather a meaningful metrics. So in order to tell that story, what we did is like, you know, um, as you've seen in that, uh, in, in our uh, application services, when we are uh, getting certain items, we are um, logging a number of counts of uh, items which are retrieved. And from that items, we use the, uh, you know, the by definition of DynamoDB capacity units, we try to calculate that. The way we do that is by definition, um, DynamoDB table uh, says that, you know, one read, it, it will charge you one uh, read capacity units if if you read an item which is uh, less than 4 kb and if it is a consistent strongly consistently read in our case um, the for the serverless application the our item size is less than 1 kb 
at less than 1 kb and also uh, it is eventual consistency so it will be charged only half of the read capacity units so that's the reason the number of products we retrieved and multiplying with 0.5 um, to get the uh, read capacity units whereas mm -hmm. for the by definition you will be charged with one read capacity unit if you read an if you write an item which is less than 1 kb so and again in our saas application um we our items are less than 1 uh, 1 kb and when we write the items then we are converting the number of uh, uh, items into directly into uh, the write capacity units so and again you can you don't need to do this uh, calculation or approximations you can get actual values but as i said we wanted to tell the story they were um with simple approximations you should be able to get a meaningful information so that's the uh, uh, overview of different moving parts uh, i know I've, i've taken so much time here but you know uh, over to uh, kevin on this one no this this is great ujwal so thank you no i just you know taking a step back you know what a lot of people find calculating cost per customer hard but what rajal just showed is with a minimum one or two line coding change you can collect the metrics storing in cloudwatch log is great because it's kind of permanent storage you don't need to do the collection and sending to cloud zero in real time you can just you know batch it every evening so once it's in the logs now it's a, that's that's all you have to do to the application is a, is a few code line changes everywhere so well everywhere and then it's the aggregation which runs once a day that can aggregate things to hourly or daily do the formatting and send it into cloud zero so all that could be done outside of your production application making this so much easier to do and then once you do one uh metric then you can add another hmm. so um you guys want me to go into what it looks like in cloud zero now after we've done the collection yeah that's it yeah. all right so uh so here's the uh, cloud zero platform and we call this the explorer uh you know we can aggregate and filter by different things we'll have a date range when we did this experiment and we're granularly hourly and so here we can see the cost of the architecture services so remember that saas application we talked about with how we had some costs associated with the pool infrastructure we have some costs that are associated with the silo and then we have shared services most applications have like a control plane or you know authentication all these services just that all the customers use to run the platform and so we've broken that out into these different ways now with these streams of metrics that uh, we collected and were injected into cloud zero so you just we have a little rest api you send that into us uh, if you want you can go to our docs.cloudzero.com you can look at our enhanced unit cost analytics i'm going to go over here and it's just sending in a record that looks something like this i think we'll get into the details for that later but so here's all the cost in this little demo environment And so now I can switch uh quickly uh just group by customers. And now I'm seeing that same cost, but now it's from the view of how the customers. So the customers here are GUIDs. You could send us GUIDs or you can send us an, you know, an actual customer name like Acme Incorporation. And so now you can see which customers are driving the cost and breaking it out. Uh, this information is invaluable to the product team, you know, because usually in a SaaS application, you know, with noisy neighbors and that type of information, you want to find the customer that's driving most of the cost. And then, mm -hmm. really quickly, we can drive into that customer. And what we see now is I'm filtering by that customer and I'm grouping things by resources, and I can see the resources that this customer has been used. Some of it's directly. attributed and some of it's just shared attributed across that um and so what's interesting about cloud zero is even though we instrumented you know collecting api gateway calls and dynamo db calls we just group our spin into kind of larger buckets you know called silo and pilot and then we target that spin to break it apart with that metric now that spin is backed by the resources that support it. So with this way of pointing metrics at spend and not necessarily an individual resource, we can break apart any AWS service. It doesn't matter, right? So we take that metric, we apply it to the spend, we find the resources that are driving that spend and then every resource that is contributing to that spend is broken out 
by these customers. Um, and that's kind of how it works. And it's a, I, we like to call it a, a top-down approach. So any metric you want can target any spin and break everything apart. Now, we have two metrics here that get us down to these customers. Um, some people might have 28 metrics. Other people might just have five. Like at Cloud Zero, we use our cost per customer or unit cost feature to learn our customer cost. And we do that with five streams. Uh, we have some customers that do it with 28. What's nice about this top-down approach, targeting spend and not resources, you can start small and iterate over time. That's really cool. And in this case, the metrics we're using are basically from, from different types of AWS services, but one could potentially put in any type of metric from, I don't know, licenses or any type of usage of something. Yeah, so what's interesting about Cloud Zero is we can take apart any cost. You know, so to build a modern SaaS application, yes, you have your cloud cost bill, but you might have Snowflake for a data warehouse, mm. and then you might have, you know, New Relic. All that spend can come together and then be targeted with various metrics to break apart. And then Cloud Zero will re-aggregate that up for you so that finance and product teams can get access to that information. That's really cool. You know, so like whatever, you know, your product, your SaaS product, it brings values to your customers and you want to pick metrics that are being showing that value. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, okay, well, I have a EC2 function that does this and it runs, it has a start and an end time, you know, that might not reflect the value that your SaaS product is driving. So if you're uh, like an email marketing firm, you know, you might want to say your metric is the number of emails per customer. You know, that has nothing to do with, how the AWS services are used, but it takes about everything about how your SaaS company is providing value. Those are the metrics that you want to use to break apart your spin. You can get down to that individual level, but you don't want to start there. Start high and work your way down. Now, besides this Explorer view, we have uh, dashboards. You can download, you know, CSVs. Uh, you know, we can uh, visualize this any way you want and pie charts, part, you know, uh, pivot tables, all that's available. We just didn't really do this in this little demo here today. No, but I think this, this is great. It, it really shows the, the value of being able to break down that that data in a visual way as well. Yep. And then, uh, you know, uh, we did a limited demo, but, you know, generally you'll find some, you know, we can sort by the most cost, the, the customer that's driving the cost. And then mm. from here, what you can do is like we just, looked at the high level services. What a lot of customers do is, you know, they'll break apart, you know, let's say their business units, they might have multiple products and those products have multiple features or services. And you can instrument each one of those services. And now you can get cost per tenant per service or cost per tenant per feature. Uh, we work with a company called Beamable and they're a gaming company and they build a, a SaaS platform that allow game developers to build their games and then run it on their infrastructure. And they were using ECS, you know, so you get the bill and it's like, hey, just this big ECS bill and the business people and the CTOs didn't know what was going on. So they have 32 services and customers can have multiple games. And then those multiple games are using multiple services. Uh, we just used basic looking at the API calls, be able to send that in with Cloud Zero, and now they're able to get cost per customer per game per service, the 32 services. And it was eye opening, you know, they, you know, now they can see which service is driving the cost with inside mm -hmm. this shared infrastructure of ECS. And if they want to optimize and, you know, to save money or optimize to make uh, increased margin and profit they can attack the service that costs the most first, right? It, it was mind blowing. And then now you get in the packaging and it's like how, what features are they using? Which features are more valuable that we should maybe charge a little bit more? Or, you know, is, are we giving away a feature for free that is, you know, 20% of our cost and maybe it shouldn't be free anymore. We should charge mm. for it. It's, you know, you look at it in this UI and it's okay. Okay. I can see cost per customer you have to 
paint that vision and see what you can do with finance and products and packaging. And then as an engineer, you know, it's, you're making buying decisions every day. Should I use, you know, this Lambda function or that Lambda function? Um, should I make, uh, you know, a call for every five minutes? Uh, that drives a cost. Maybe you should call every 10 minutes instead hmm. of that, you know, cut that cost in half. It's, it's amazing what you can do once you start seeing that cost and you can track it over time uh, and see that your cost is going up because you're adding customers, but that unit cost is going down you know, <laughs> that looks great to the C-suite and you're doing a really good job uh, and you can show that through cost. Yeah, Hel helping with those business decisions through, mm -hmm. through the tech stack. And I can imagine when, when you start using this and diving more and more into the, the details of it that you start adding more and more granularity as well mm -hmm. to, yeah. to add more and more metric data uh, as an input to be able to dive even deeper into it. Yeah, so let me show you a little bit uh, under the curtains how we get to this, you know, allocation where we've broken apart the system. So at Cloud Zero, we have a domain-specific language uh, called cost formation uh, to break apart things. And it, it can merge tags or other type of metadata. So I'm going to switch over here to Visual Studio Code. And we've written this domain language in YAML. And so here's where I'm defining this dimension called architecture services. And so we're creating a group. Uh, here is our pooled. And we're saying, hey, look for resources. And anything that contains the word pool, we're going to put into side this element. And anything that has a tenant ID of pooled, we're going to put that into pool services. So with this cost formation language, I'm able to use conditional logic to be able to group things together. Some of it's tags, other of, it, other of it's like metadata, like auto scaling groups, call, cloud formation stack names and those type of things. And I can use and and ors and not to be able to group the spin any way I want. And I can make it update, push it into the platform and within a minute I can see the results. And so here's how we found all the silo stuff. We're looking for, uh, here I defined a thing called a cost group, which is an abstract way of us metadating a whole bunch of strings together. And if it has a tenant ID value and it's true, then group it in here. Now everything's done in order, so higher priority. So things with tenant ID pulled get into here, so pulled won't fall down. And then I was able to do uh, cloud management. Here I'm saying, okay, any cost group that has the word management, alarm, secret, guard duty, config, group this stuff together. And, and then here's our shared stores. So we were able to look at across the resource name, that's basically the AWS ARN and group things together. Hmm. And so really quickly, this is how I'm doing the meta matching where you have a whole bunch of resources and they're all tagged differently and everything else like that. We can merge things together. So I know I can find pooled things and I can say, okay, these are all my tenants that are pooled. Uh, down here, I can say, in CloudWatch logs, anything that has create production function or create order function, group those things together. And I know those are siloed shared resources. Without tags, I can do this. Now, one of the other things that we did is uh, Cloud Zero is really good at breaking apart shared resources. So we have in our silo uh, SaaS application, you know, we have our control plane and that should be you know, allocated to all our customers because all the customers are using that. So here's where I'm breaking apart the shared services with what I call an even split. So here we're doing an allocation. It's an even. And we're saying, hey, the spend that we want to allocate is that dimension where we group the architecture services together across shared services. And then I say, take this spend and allocate it evenly across everybody else. So across these elements, and I'm grabbing all my customers that are siloed and pooled, and I group those together. And so just, you know, in 10, 15 lines of code or YAML, I'm able to evenly split all those shared resources. And then we can do proportional split. split. So there's other shared resources that are kind of driven by the cost of those customers. And that's what this is doing. Now we're doing proportional. We're saying, okay, all the silo customers, if you drive more of the spend, 
you know, you're going to get that spend allocated to you. And so at the end of the day, you know, we have our architecture services, this YAML. Now, when I say customers, um, the telemetry stream that's coming in from you draw that defines the customers and all that cost formation allows us to do this, you know, so that's the heavy lifting that cloud zero can do. That's really cool. And uh, yeah, shout out to Jamal as well. We, we love Jamal here on the Building SaaS on AWS show. So uh, I like the, that. The engineers that uh, built this here at Cloud Zero, uh, just amazing how they put this together. And, um, you know, it's just a plug into Visual Studio Code and I can inject it in via API. It's, it's mm. truly incredible. Oh, that's really cool. So, Udwal, uh, maybe we should just take a step back and, and uh, try out the working demo as well to, to see how that data is, is gathered there. Sure. Um, so uh, let me share my screen here. Um, so, yeah, this is the, the SaaS application which we are using. It gives you the UI uh, piece. Um, this is the UI. You know, as I said, it has simple product and order services. Um, so what you can, what I can do is they're going to come here and uh, create some products uh, or create some orders and then um, generate some data out of it. Um, but again, you can see that, you know, that's not a scalable solution. So I cannot keep sitting here and creating that manually. So what we did in the solution is, uh, or in our approach is, we use some load testing tool called Artillery. Um, that tool, what it does, like, you know, we created a bunch of tenants and then it starts hitting this uh, APIs exposed by this uh, uh, SaaS application. And then it generated the data and so that the product and order services which when you invoke uh, capture the metrics and uh, um what and again uh, once the data is captured in the cloud watch again we'll we, we we ran our aggregator code which mm. um you know pulled all the data and uh, daily it sent the data to the um, cloud zero as a telemetry data but now here uh, for the demo uh, what it is like you now i've created some uh, tenants and it generated some load and I can quickly show you that query, the queries which we talked about to run in the CloudWatch logs and see how the data would look like, the aggregated data. So this is the, you know, the, the CloudWatch logs. And under that, if you go to the logs inside query, I, I try to, you know, you need to select the different log groups for against which you want to run these queries. And again, you have seen the aggregator code, which tries to automate all of this work. But for the demo, I'm just running the query. So this, the first query, what we are seeing here is um, the query which will give you the number of Lambda invocations. We did uh, talk about this one uh, before, uh, which is basically looking for this keyword. Uh, and if you if I run this query, I'm going for the past two days, uh, basically. And uh, so what you get is this, the whole data here. And if you see that what I'm doing is I'm aggregating things by you know for, for each tenant id i'm aggregating the data by uh, service and also the timestamp so as you said as i said you know i'm trying to send this data as a, a daily uh, um, load to the uh, cloud zero so i'm trying to aggregate this by timestamp and if you see that you know for a given tenant id for the pro for the product service for the given day these were the number of lambda invocations mm. and the similarly like you know for the same tenant id for this service on this day the number of lambda invocations is this much and for a different tenant for the product service, these were the number of Lambda invocations. Thus, this, this metric information is what you are sending to the uh, Cloud Zero as a telemetry API where they would uh, you know, use the cost for the um, pooled resources. And whereas for the, let me run the query for the DynamoDB capacity units um, here, uh, the other query, let me comment this guy here. Um, And again, you will see here uh, it aggregated by the tenant ID. And the, mm -hmm. you know, this query is I'm just running for the product service. For the order, order service, there's a separate query. Um, so it is aggregating by tenant ID, the timestamp by day, and the number of capacity units. So as I said earlier, um, I'm getting you know, the Lambda functions, which are retrieving the data. I'm considering that as a, a read capacity unit. And the Lambda functions, which are writing the data as a write capacity unit and getting the number of records, translating that into read capacity and write capacity units and summarizing everything uh, and then aggregating the things. If you, you know, that's, that's the, if you look at the query, the, the last part is what, that's what it is doing. It is like, you know, getting these different uh, capacity units and then summarizing that and getting the overall uh, value here. So within this one query, a lot of things happening here. 
uh, it is looking at uh, your your, uh, your your metrics information getting the read capacity and its write capacity and its uh, counts and translating that and then summarizing it and this is the information which is passed to the telemetry api as a telemetry api to the cloud zero so yeah. just to summarize for the siloed resources the things are tagged in this case and it is available in the cost and usage report which is used by cloud zero and the um, pool resources we picked up these two areas this telemetry data is passed down to the cloud zero and uh, well what we see here is as well that this doesn't really care about what the actual cost per invocation is because that's being used from the cost and usage report that you talked about earlier as well right right yes so then for something like the the newly launched uh, tiered pricing for aws lambda for instance your solution would just work uh, straight away because that will then also be included in the usage report. Right. Yes. And then, and, and I think I believe uh, in the cloud zero is also on the cloud zero side. Once you get the information, you can play around on how you want to uh, uh, apportion some of the uh, those those usage to certain um, uh, lambda invocations or like you know, one mm. one lambda invocation is equal to this much value or something like that. You know, and obviously Kevin can uh, talk more on that. But yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so like the Cloud Zero platform, you know, we see all the discounts in the tiering and we can apply that any which way you want. You know, in my demo today, I'm just showing a small subset of what we can do. There's a lot more we can do. So, you know, come by and, and check us out sometime. Right. So we are approaching top of the hour, just a few more minutes to go. Uh, if you just joined us, you're unlucky because we've had a great show with Kevin and, and Ujval, but don't worry, you can watch it on demand afterwards as well. We've looked at how to calculate cost per tenant using Cloud Zero. So maybe it's time to, to wrap it up a bit and just a brief of what we've actually done. Um, Ujval, maybe you want to bring up that slide again that, that sure. showed the overview. Showed, yeah. And a shout out to to the way you've been switching windows today, Udval. It's it's been top notch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I learned from my previous uh, problems. So yeah, uh, so yeah, so just wanted to summarize here that you know uh, in our uh, SaaS application, the, the SaaS application which we choose for this solution, it had uh, two things: the siloed uh, resources and the pooled resources stuff. Um, so for the siloed resources. Uh, those resources are tagged uh, with tenant ID, and that uh, you can see that is a dedicated compute. We're calling that as a dedicated compute or like a you know, dedicated database. That information uh, is available in the cost and usage report, and uh, the Cloud Zero pulls that information and enriches that information. And then you have seen how uh, it shows you uh, in an explorer. And then for the pooled resources, uh, it is a shared compute or a shared database uh, instances where uh, we showed you how you need to uh, capture the metrics with the tenant context through a CloudWatch logs or some other uh, logging tool. And then uh, we showed you uh, how you can write a simple aggregator code, which is basically you know, aggregating the, um, the captured metrics from those logs and group by that by the tenant ID and you know, timestamp on the uh, product and order services. And then pass that information, telemetry information hourly or daily, depending upon your needs, to the telemetry APIs of Cloud Zero. And then um, you saw on the Cloud Zero side how they used this different types of resources data and aggregated that and you know, gave you the overall um, information about how to look at the different components and how much it costed uh, you for uh, running your you know, SaaS platform. Yeah, I just, you know, I would love to add, um, you know, the color coding here is very important. So the green code is the existing SaaS architecture very minimal, small changes, a few lines of code to add the metrics and you're done with that part, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so that's really easy to do. And then you can really expand that out. You're not changing the application hardly at all. And then the purple part, you know, that was the new code uh, that's available on GitHub to download, which is, you know, aggregating inside the logs and sending it to cloud zero. So this was a, a great architecture that they did minimal changes and able to get huge value out of it. And Kevin, maybe to, to tie things up a bit from, from your end, um, how do customers then use this data? You mentioned a few examples of it, but um, I, I can think of, of one that you perhaps haven't touched that much about. It's about uh, how you actually price your customers in the end. 
Yeah. So, you know, uh, we have customers and, and Cloud Zero does this the same is, you know, we know uh, because of our cost per customer, you know, within 24 hours, we know how much it's going to cost us to host uh, a customer for the whole year. All right. Mm-hmm. And that's invaluable because, you know, when you're pricing and packaging, you know, are you making a profit or not? You know, which maybe you want to fire one of your customers. Maybe one customer is using your product in such a way that you didn't anticipate that it's just blowing the costs through the roof and you don't want to renewal them. You know, so when uh, the sales team and stuff are renewing folks, they review this to see, you know, how can we, you know, price and package so that we make our margin so that we're a successful company. So one of the things I didn't mention about Cloud Zero is, you know, we're SOC one type two compliant. So our customers use this data to report straight to Wall Street for these public companies. Um, And we have a guaranteed process to make sure that the values are correct. So pricing and packaging is, is a huge win for how customers use it. On the engineering side, you know, you built this platform to be resilient and performant. Um, you know, because we're making buying decisions in the cloud, you know, what is the cost of that? You know, you have a choice of picking this service or that service or architecting it in a different way. Mm-hmm. And those decisions affect the margin of your company because you have to pay the cloud bill at the end of the day. So engineering's use this so that they can, you know, quote unquote, optimize or make better decisions Uh, because this happens in, you know, real time, you know, within the day, you're seeing the changes and how it does it. So if you do a release and all of a sudden your cost skyrockets or a customer increases, you can instantly say, well, you know, that's not going to work. Let's roll back that change and then let's use cost to kind of figure out what's happening. Right. So Ujval, I think at the beginning of the show, you promised the viewers a blog post within a couple of weeks or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, this this whole solution and whatever we went through, uh, we did uh, uh, wrote that blog, and you know it's in the final stage of getting published. Uh, uh, there are a few final checks which need to happen. So hopefully by end of this month, uh, uh, we'll be able to release that uh, uh, a blog, and that blog goes through the whole thing which we went through, and also it provides you the uh, the code uh, snippet. And again, the, the, the code uh, part, which I went through the aggregator code, it's already on the uh, AWS samples. Uh, it's public, but it's just that the, uh, the, the other t- uh, time piece, that's a blog post, is uh, is getting delayed. Uh, but yeah, by the end of this month, we should be able to publish that. And you should be able to walk through that and understand things. You, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, Udval is promising a blog post at the end of the month. <laughs> sure, uh, yeah. <laughs> If you want to find that blog post as soon as it's out, uh, do connect with uh, me on Twitter or LinkedIn with Ujval. Uh, I'm not sure, Kevin, if you're on any of the socials. I'm on LinkedIn. You know, just look up Kevin Mueller at Cloud Zero, and you'll find me. And please reach out. There we go. All right, uh, Ujval, Kevin, thank you so much for joining today on Building SaaS on AWS, where we've looked at how to calculate cost per tenant using cloud zero and to all the viewers thank you very much for joining us today Uh, it's been a pleasure and uh, looking forward to seeing you again on future episodes all right thank you all very much bye-bye thank you thank you